vinyl, it, it's the only way to make uh, sound solid, like to bring it into our dimension. Listen, there's something sacred about the whole thing. 12 by 12, 33 RPM. Putting it on your turntable for the first time and dropping the needle on the record. It's magical. It's mind blowing. The thrill of what might be behind the door of that little shop. You know, I've never been stunned to find an MP3. What are you here for? Louisa. You have people who are actually all from different areas of life, different ages, different backgrounds. But when it comes to this thing, we're kind of mostly on the same page. You put that back in the sleeve, that's your album. There are a lot of different ways that I could listen to a song. I keep listening to them on vinyl because of how it feels. What you're talking about is large groups of people who previously were not affluent enough to be targeted. It was very affordable, it sounded great. And then of course by the 1980s, the coming of the CD, record sales begin to fall off a cliff. It was like, no, why? It's here, why change it? It all came crashing down in the Napster era. People would bring in all their records and on top of the pile would be their turn tape. It got worse before it got better. There was this sense that music was becoming ever more portable, but at the same time, there were people who were also interested in having music that they could hold in their hand. More and more people started making vinyl again. You all of a sudden realize that there's more and more stores opening up. I think we're seeing this pendulum swing back towards analog because we're gathering around together in a much more human way. It's a good thing to discover things that I didn't really live, but other people lived. We have each other's backs. It's an awesome sisterhood. <sighs> I'm not gonna cry, Kevin. I only have faith in a couple of things. Music is one of them. Love is the other. <laughs>